So Google usually releases previews bright and early, but opted for a slightly later than average release for Android 13 QPR 2 Beta 1, although it's terribly named. Effectively, this is the next beta for the upcoming Pixel feature drop. And right on the heels of the December iteration, which we've detailed, which you can find via the link in the description, this is likely to come in March 2023, the stable version of this beta release. But here's everything you need to know. Thanks for watching 95 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. So Google should release two more betas before the consumer launch of this release in March 2023 to Pixel devices. If you want to quickly install the Android 13 QPR 2 Beta 1, it's actually available for Pixel 4a right through to the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro, and you'll find direct links to enroll or even sideload manually down in the description below. There are some new tweaks and some added tuning here. So this is all of the user facing functions that we've spotted so far. If you want to see any of our top features in previous Android platform updates though, then again, you'll find that playlist down via in the description too. Before diving in fully, we will be comparing the Pixel 7 Pro running the December feature drop at times to show you just where the necessary changes are made. But without any further ado, let's get on with it. So let's start with some of the admittedly minor changes to the lock screen. You might notice a few tweaks here and the now playing search key and track artist information is probably the most notable, which does appear a little higher towards the in-display fingerprint scanner on the Pixel 6 and Pixel 7 series. This just gives this area a little bit more prominence and visibility and makes it a little bit less of a distraction and more integral to the entire lock screen. Another notable is that when you open your device with the pin rather than the fingerprint scanner or any other biometric option, the entry screen here has a slightly larger emergency button with increased padding on that M3 button. This should make it a little bit easy to activate, but it's not a massive change all the same. After unlocking though, the home screen has a few changes of its own, including greater spacing and padding between the persistent dock and the Pixel launcher. It just looks a little bit more obviously spaced here. There's also now a thicker border of empty space around the edges of the screen, as well as above your row of shortcuts. And having a wider horizontal border may be a welcome change for owners of the Pixel 6 Pro and the Pixel 7 Pro, which have moved the UI away from those curved edges of the display, something that we tend to see as a major complaint with curved displays wholesale. You'll also notice that if you use home screen folders, the padding and spacing is much greater with larger folder label text here too. Just makes it a little bit easier to see these, but we're not sure if this is gonna be a permanent addition. Sliding down the notification shade though, and there are a few more changes here, including to the status bar, which is visible here in the black area at the top. When you fully expand the notification shade, the upper left clock, which was usually just along that line, is now larger and fuses the date as well, the date information, and that time together in an almost similar manner to lock screen. It's just larger, easier to spot, and makes it a bit more prominent, and it fits in with the rest of the material you redesign. But because this increases the padding along this entire area of the top of the phone, you'll also notice that the current carrier connectivity status is now visible in the upper right once you've expanded. Uh, that's just above the battery percentage or time remaining for your battery life. Tapping this, even if you don't have a SIM installed like I have on my device here, you can actually enter the connectivity and network settings page, which is a really quick shortcut that is a nice addition as well. This though does mean that the brightness controls and all quick settings toggles are now shifted slightly downwards, which should in theory help reachability if only marginally. That's not the only changes though to the quick settings panel as when playing music, videos and podcasts, anything with audio that you can control with the control center here, there are more tweaks to the media play notification. It's just an area that Google just seemingly can't leave alone. So when you tap the play and pause button, you might notice a really, really subtle aura glow effect that will activate and sort of slowly fade. It's almost like ripples on water, and this is actually almost invisible. It will depend heavily on the color of the player or the background of album art that you're using. And it isn't just lo no, uh, limited to the quick settings panel here either. You can actually see this on the lo lock screen too. I found it's a little bit more visible there when you don't have as many distractions, but it's a subtle change and something that, again, we could see Google change over time. 
One thing that almost slipped by during the editing process of this video is that the Pixel 6 Pro is now also able to access the ability to use the 1080p and 1440p modes, which is now available on the Pixel 7 Pro or shipped with the Pixel 7 Pro. That is available as part of QPR2 Beta 1. So if you're a Pixel 6 Pro owner, it might be something to try out because this could have some potential battery benefits for you. When we head into the settings section with QPR2 Beta 1 installed on our devices, there are a few changes here that include the return of the spatial audio toggle within the sound and vibration section. We're not sure it does anything at this point in time, but this is expected to arrive in January, as was noted as part of that December Pixel feature drop, so it's not limited to the beta devices, it will come eventually to those on the stable channel. For whatever reason as well, the security or within the security section, QPR2 Beta 1 also disables or at least removes that brand new unified security and privacy section, at least at the time of this video going live. This is still live on stable builds though, so that's just something to know. It doesn't appear that it's gonna be removed entirely, probably just removed for the sake of this beta build. The only other notable change in the settings is the addition of Health Connect, which is now a default preloaded application within Android itself. And this is just an application that allows for the sharing of health data between various health and fitness applications with system controls letting you toggle what can be shared or blocked. It doesn't seem to be working for everyone, but it is there now as part of the system. Of course, there's also the December 2022 patch for those of you wondering. So if you're fully secure and you're running that latest patch, even on this beta build, if you do want to put it on your device. Something you might not notice though, is the addition of a predictive back gesture, which now does work with the settings application so that you can hold the back swipe gesture to just see where within the Android system that you'll be going back to. Hopefully more system sections and applications start to support this as the betas progress, as it's very limited right now and there's only a few applications across all of Android that even support it. That's most of the notable user-facing changes that we think you need to know about in Android 13 QPR2 Beta 2. As we know, there should be two more updates before the stable launch sometime in March 2023, hopefully the first week of that month. That means that not everything added here is going to be guaranteed to arrive on the stable builds, but conversely, we could even see more additions later down the line, as well as maybe a few subtractions if Google deems them not worthy of being added. Now, Really, we wouldn't recommend installing this on your device just yet. I've actually personally seen quite a few bugs that have been annoying, like artifacts when trying to unlock with the fingerprint scanner and that sometimes can't work and it was working absolutely fine on the stable build, or even the new media play or the media play controls cutting in half in the quick settings panel. That's probably the, the ex major extent of the problems I've had, but this of course is a lot more stable than developer preview builds, which we're expecting for Android 14 sometime in the new year. I'll leave links below if you do want to check these out and sideload this for yourself, but if you, it's also worth noting that if you do choose to enroll and then leave the beta, you will actually lose all of your on-device data, so at the point when you do unenroll. So I would say proceed with caution and make backups regularly if you do want to run the beta on your device. That's why I, I would say for most people, leave it be, wait a little bit longer until it's a little bit more stable and you have all of those additions on top of that. But hopefully you've enjoyed this brief video hands-on with Android 13 QPR 2 Beta 1. We didn't anticipate there would be much changes, but there's enough here that I think some of you might be interested. After all though, hopefully you enjoyed this. This is Damien95Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.